Ah, <sighs> Daisy Ridley. I'm not surprised because I've been in the film industry for a while now. Daisy Ridley is a prime example of how the NDA almost oppresses people in Hollywood. Now, for those of you who don't know what an NDA is, an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. It's a contract that essentially means you, by law, cannot disclose certain things about a project you are involved in, good or bad. Even if you're one of the crew, one of the extras, one of the stand-ins, the doubles, whatever, you have to abide by the NDA. And if you go out of your way to go against it, you are taken to court, especially if the project you're working on is owned by Disney. They do this the most. This actually happened to a friend of mine that I met on a Disney set about a year and a half ago. Now, this particular individual broke his NDA because we were being paid less than we should have. And he had the balls to get equity involved, which means that equity had to come in and make sure we were being paid enough. Now, although we got our pay bumped up because he broke his NDA, they kicked him off the set, didn't pay him what he was due, and threatened him with legal action. Now, they didn't actually do it in the end because they wanted to look good, but it just shows you how ruthless Disney can be. Even if you're one of the high-profile celebrities, you can be taken for everything you have. And the A-list celebrities' contracts are always worse because they're always in the limelight. They're always being interviewed, being brought onto news shows, onto talk shows and stuff. So everything they say is constantly under the watch of the media, the press, the fans, and the internet. So whilst I am annoyed that Daisy Ridley has almost gone back on her words from two weeks ago. I am not disappointed in her. I'm not upset with her. Because I understand how oppressive Hollywood can be. And Daisy Ridley is just trying to eat, just like every one of us out there. She's being paid a crap ton. And she would be foolish not to take this job. So it's understandable why she'd sell her integrity. She's making her name right now with Star Wars. And once she's done, she can then be free and she will have the money in her account to live on for the rest of her life and probably for her children and her children's children. Another example would be Mark Hamill and how Mark Hamill is now starting to speak his mind because he's not involved in Star Wars, especially when he's done with this last film. And yes, Disney would try and slip him a couple hundred K every now and then, but ultimately he can now stay true to his integrity because he's made his millions. Daisy Ridley, however, is making her millions. And we have to understand that. We don't like it, but we have to understand it. Now, on to the most recent article that came out yesterday. Daisy Ridley wants Star Wars fans to voice their opinions without being so... vicious. While Star Wars is still one of the most popular franchises to ever exist in the universe, a bit of the luster, that's, I've never heard that before, a bit of the luster has worn from it in the last few years as more films have been produced. While many seem to universally love the original trilogy and almost universally hate the prequel trilogy, most do not hate it, most just think it wasn't as good as the original, which is an objective fact, the new Star Wars movies have produced much more debate, with many loving them and many others hating them just as strongly. The Star Wars actress, Daisy Ridley for one, would love to see this passion displayed in a somewhat less vicious fashion. So she's assuming it's almost completely vicious. I mean, like there's no rational discussion going on about the uh, positives and negatives of this film, of this franchise. Quite a lot of people are very, despite being skeptical, very impressed with The Force Awakens, for example. But The Last Jedi has many flaws. It's probably the most disappointing film of this decade, I might add. People weren't necessarily vicious, until a certain individual started being vicious to instigate it all. Now, I'm sure you're very familiar with his name, Daisy Ridley. His name is Ryan Johnson. When he attacked fans for criticising the film, people might have been vicious then. I agree. There are some people who might have been vicious towards some actors and actresses involved in the film, such as Kelly Marie Tran, Rose Tico's actress from The Last Jedi. Some speculate that she was harassed heavily, and that is why she removed her Instagram account. But to lump those toxic fans with the critics is a bit dismissive, don't you think? Funny enough, this isn't the first celebrity to do this in Hollywood. Recently, the Game of Thrones actor that played the traitor's bastard Jon Snow, Kit Harington, said something very similar in regards to the criticisms for the last season of Game of Thrones. I actually made a video on this, funny enough. So you can see this is a bit of a trend, right? But let's move on. 
It isn't exactly a secret that the new Star Wars movies have their detractors. That's an interesting way of saying critics. Star Wars The Last Jedi specifically caused a very vocal outpour of vitriol. In a recent interview, Daisy Ridley says that while she supports fans' desire to be expressive of their opinions, she'd like to see them do it in a slightly different way. It's great that people are expressive of their views, but this is people's jobs. Ah, this is exactly what Kit Harrington said. People worked really, really hard on that thing. I think there's a way of having discussion that isn't so vicious. Not everyone who's criticising the film is so vicious. I don't see you bring up the majority of the people that are actually making rational criticism. <laughs> Fucking hell, I can't even speak today. Criticism of the film. Whatever, Daisy. You do you. Daisy Ridley relates a story to Bustle, that she was once at a friend's birthday party and somebody she barely knew felt it was necessary to tell her that she didn't like The Last Jedi. Clearly, this was information Ridley did not need especially first-hand from a relative stranger. Somebody went out of her way to attack Ridley's job directly to her. And I will quickly comment on this because I am a firm believer that people need to understand that just because someone's portrayal in a film may have been bad doesn't necessarily mean the actor or actress is bad themselves, as they are under direction from the directors and writers. Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker's actor, is another prime example. He was under the direction of George Lucas. People need to understand this, so I can understand where Ridley is coming from. However, to lump this person along with the other fans who actually understand this is a bit absurd, don't you think? I mean, let's be a bit more factual, Daisy. Most of the criticism was directed towards the writing and the direction. So Ryan Johnson, in other words. Moving on. It's fun if people don't like movies. That's certainly going to happen. Not everybody likes everything. However, for the people who work in the film, it's simply a job. Most of us don't feel inclined to let every person we come to contact know if we don't think they do their job well. We just move on with our lives. And I understand that. But then don't get upset that people are criticising the film, you know? That's all people are trying to say. And sure, you get the odd idiots out there, but not every idiot is out there trying to criticise you. Most of them are trying to criticise the film. You get me? Moving on. However, so many people identify on a personal level with Star Wars, and the movies are more than just stories. There's clearly a passion here amongst so many, and Daisy Ridley isn't looking to stifle that passion, simply redirect it. Perhaps people shouldn't take movies so seriously. Nothing about the decisions made in these films are personal, and yet many of the attacks are. I see where the writer is coming from. People do need to stop taking Star Wars so seriously. However, these people making the film also need to understand that these people have paid for it with their own bloody money. So they do have a right to criticise and to talk. But when we go into this last bit, understand Daisley. Ryan Johnson, the writer and director, also was part of the attacks. So are you going to apply the same standard to him? Probably not, because you didn't address him in this. Daisy Ridley says social media is part of the issue, as when people like comments, it reinforces the behaviour. No, it doesn't. People who behave like this are responsible for themselves and themselves alone, Daisy. No one else has to take agency for them. If someone is influenced by social media antics, then that is their fault as an individual for not being mature enough to handle a situation. And I'm talking about able-minded adults here, Daisy, not children. Perhaps you're talking about children, and perhaps that's what Disney wants people to be treated as, so they can control them and take their money. But hey, that's just conspiracy theorist talk, right? <laughs> the idea that we can dislike something without being vicious about it is certainly a nice thought. Also, it's something that happens quite a lot. You just don't hear about it, or you don't think about it enough, or you don't look into it enough. Although evidence suggests that the response isn't going anywhere anytime soon, if the majority of people like Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, then we might not get as many angry social media posts. But if the film gets a similar reaction to Star Wars The Last Jedi, there is a good chance we'll be getting more of the same. Now I'm not going to repeat what I've already said, but let's be honest. Perhaps if the people making the film made a good product, you wouldn't have so many people criticising the film. And bear in mind, these people don't have anywhere else to criticise the film other than the internet, because who else will hear it? Social media definitely has its pros and its cons. Yes, some people get a bit too entitled, but at the same time, it connects the world so that everyone can hear everyone's criticisms. It also makes it so everyone's voice can be heard, which I think is a good thing. But that is the end of that article. Now, if we look at the article about two weeks ago, I can show you something very interesting that links to the title of this video. The article begins, 
Daisy Ridley reveals she was not surprised by the divisiveness of The Last Jedi. As far as film franchises go, there are quite few as beloved as Star Wars. George Lucas's colourful world has been captivating moviegoers for decades, with generations of fans growing up with the space opera. As such, the expectations for each new blockbuster was usually high, but this passion for the franchise can sometimes work against it, as the fandom can lash out when projects surprise or fail to meet their standards. I don't think surprising is the problem here. Well, unless you're talking about subversion of expectations, then, <laughs> well, that might be a cause. <laughs> that was the case of Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi, as some fans took umbrage with the sequel's subversive nature. Daisy Ridley reveals that she was actually expecting this backlash, as she put it, I wasn't surprised. No, it's just a different thing. <laughs> Difference, one way of putting it. Everyone's going to have an opinion now anyway on the internet, but I also think it's fair. If people hold something incredibly dear, and they think they know how it should be, and it's not like that, it's fair for people to think that they were done wrong. It doesn't mean that they were, ultimately, I sense Hollywood speaking. Ryan's a filmmaker, and one person can't dictate how a film is supposed to be. But freedom of expression, sure. <sighs> this is what I mean about Hollywood getting to actors and actresses. She says she understands why people are having a bit of a backlash, right? But she's also saying in the next one that she wishes people weren't so vicious whilst ignoring the reasons for why it was vicious. And she hinted that she actually knows why in this article. A lot of actors and actresses are starting to realise a lot of the political agendas and the bad writing qualities from the writers and directors not having direction skills at all in some of these films and are voicing their dismay, subtly or overtly. Daisy Ridley, however, happens to be one of those people who are lovely darlings deep down, but have to abide by the rules of Hollywood, which is a shame. In the past, I've pointed out that Natalie Emmanuel, the actress that plays Miss Sande in Game of Thrones, is another master of this. And it's a shame because I've met Natalie Emmanuel in person, and she's a darling in real life. A friend of mine worked on a TV show called Youngers that Daisy Ridley actually had a little role on about five or six years ago. But this is way before her Star Wars job, so she was relatively unknown back then. And from what I've heard, Daisy Ridley is a nice person as well. She has a good head on her shoulders, she has a lot of ambition, and well, as you can see, several years later it's paid off, right? It's a shame that a lot of these actors and actresses have to play the game and sell their integrity. It's only when actors and actresses grow above and beyond their films and TV shows that they actually have the confidence in themselves to voice their true opinion and not have to subvert attention from their true opinions. Mark Hamill can speak his mind because he's one of the most well-known actors in the planet. Scarlett Johansson can speak her mind in regards to meritocracy when hiring actors and actresses for certain roles because she's the highest grossing actress in the planet. But young Daisy Ridley, who's just starting out, is not going to be able to do that. Natalie Emmanuel, who is a high-level B-list celebrity, is not going to be able to speak her mind. And fortunately for me, I'm not even a celebrity. I'm currently anonymous on my YouTube channel. And in the acting world, I am fairly unknown anyway. So even if I wasn't anonymous, it wouldn't bother me until I actually made a name for myself. When you're in the middle, you have to play by the rules. Otherwise, you're removed from the limelight. You struggle to find work. You're blacklisted. And your acting career, your music career, whatever career that's in the limelight is gone to waste. Which is why you shouldn't hate Daisy Ridley. You shouldn't hate Kelly Marine Tran. You shouldn't hate John Brega. You shouldn't hate Natalie Emmanuel, Emilia Clarke, even Kit Harrington, who's actually apparently a nice bloke, despite the things he's said in the past. Isaac Hempstead. Sophie Turner, even. They are just puppets in the game. Don't hate on them for doing their jobs. They are just trying to survive under the cartel that is Hollywood. Another sad story about the corruption of Hollywood. Remember, everyone who goes into a film set has to sign an NDA, which means they are selling their souls to the devil, especially if they are working for a Disney project. And you know how we can change this? If we stop supporting Disney, if we stop supporting companies and organisations that don't actually have the consumer's best interest at heart, we want to trick us into paying for their stuff to nickel and dime us. We want to push their politics, or at least push the politics that they believe to be popular, just to get people to watch their products. 
and spend money on them. Just stop supporting them. And then eventually, they will change for the better. Just look at the new Star Wars theme park, Galaxy's Edge. Prime example of voting with your wallets. Disney realises they're going to have to fix the fuck up now. Pay with your wallets, people. That is the solution. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.